You want to talk about uh, Valve's new VR hardware right on the eve of the arrival of your new VR headset that you spent over a thousand US dollars on? <laughs> Is that something that you'd like to talk about, Luke? Not really. <laughs> Why don't we talk about it anyway? So I mean, I'm still very excited about my big screen beyond, but... Uh, has it arrived yet? Uh, yes, but it arrived the day that I left, so I, I never even got to see it. Nice. I've actually like, been like using mine a bit lately, when it showed up. and it's, it's as great as I represented to you. In fact, it's better because I got my fixed one back, and it is very much actually fixed. So I'm That's not fantastic. having tracking issues with the wands and... Um, I'm super stoked. It, oh, it looks so good. And Valve has a new one. Valve has applied for a trademark on the term Steam Frame. And between the content of the filings and some heavy-duty data mining by Brad Lynch, a.k.a. Sadly It's Bradley on Twitter, it looks like new VR hardware might soon be officially announced by Valve. Data mining of the latest Steam VR beta has revealed that Valve is appearing to be working on a rebranding of Steam VR overlays to frames. And Brad Lynch also speculates that the official name of the rumored Deckard headset will be the Steam Frame, with the major selling point being its spatial gaming capabilities. Lynch also noted that the Roy VR controllers are no longer marked as prototypes in the Steam VR drivers, and that drivers are now finished for a Steam Link VR USB dongle using Wi-Fi 6E slash 6 gigahertz. So, what this probably looks like, based on that every rumor I've seen about Deckard indicates that it's going to be inside-out tracking with onboard processing, um, what this seems to add up to is an inside-out with built-in compute VR headset, more akin to what we've seen from the MetaQuest lineup or Apple Vision Pro lineup, but if the 6 gigahertz dongle is anything to go by with the capability of wirelessly linking to your PC for high fidelity PC gaming. What remains to be seen is what the resolution Valve is going to be able to push is going to be because I'm not aware of a wireless interface that can reliably and consistently match a wired interface for displays yet. And if anything, even the fastest display links these days are not enough for what I was hoping would be the future of high fidelity PC VR. Um, I have kind of out of the you know side of my eyes been sort of watching the rumors around Deckard and kind of just hoping and hoping and hoping that maybe it's not um, the whole story because I really wanted a second gen or I guess third gen i i wanted another generation of lighthouse um yeah for the the third party ecosystem of vr headsets that has sprung up around steam vr and steam vr 2.0 but it looks like maybe that's just gonna be dead um i don't know we'll have to see it the, the rumors seem pretty strong but it is technically still rumor mill yeah, it does seem like the evidence is really Pretty stacking good. up that yeah. Deckard is going to yeah. be a standalone headset and that this whole ecosystem of outside-in tracking is just going to be kind of stuck where it is today with, what is it, it's 90 refreshes per second for the lighthouses, I think? Uh, I That sounds right. I don't know. Um. I, th I, think they're, I think they're 90 hertz. Uh, VR base station, blah, blah, blah. Well, the base stations themselves are not... Blah, blah, blah. Uh, how, how, how often do they refresh, you guys? Some, someone's got someone's to gotta know. Uh, Lighthouse tracking 2.0 with alternating brain warp. Uh, 75 slash 90 hertz, 150 slash 180 with alternating eye brain warp rendering. Now, to be clear, that's not the only data input. There's also a uh, built-in um, accelerometer slash gyro in the controllers themselves. And so the lighthouses are from my understanding, um, in order to keep make sure that they don't drift off course. But ah, still, I, I really hoped that large-scale outside-in would continue to be a thing. I, I do understand why it's not a thing, 
because who has the space for it? Who's going to go and wire 12 volt power into their ceiling so that they can have a stealthy install of a bunch of, you know, base stations? Who's going to, you know, get four of them so that they never have any occlusion, even when they have an extremely large play area? Basically me and only me. And so fine, I, I get it. Um, but hopefully, hopefully Valve has taken their, I mean, they've clearly taken their time and hopefully they've cooked up something absolutely fire and I'm going to absolutely love the frame or Deckard or whatever they ultimately end up calling it. Either way, Luke, I, I don't think you're going to be disappointed with your big screen beyond because no, I'm excited. if there is any onboard compute in Deckard, then there's absolutely no way that it's going to be light, period. I mean, Apple, for all their billions of dollars of R&D, uh, no, to be clear, not all of which went into the Vision Pro, but, you know, some of it did, um, couldn't figure out how to make a, an on-device compute uh, VR headset, you know, not freaking heavy. So I don't think Valve is going to crack that nut just right now. Gay-coons. Yeah, I'm also just like, I don't know, you, you can't always time everything perfectly and even if i could i feel like i still would have gone with the big screen beyond um, yeah it's very it's wearable that i'm i'm happy to support and honestly i'm just really excited to get it so i don't know gikuns uh, says what's the current state of using vr for productivity i gotta say i uh, never got into it i i tried it when i did my apple vision pro review and there were things about it that were compelling but wearing something on my face for such an extended period of time for the workday, especially working in office where I frequently interact with other fellow humans, it's just not feasible. It's not viable for me. I still know people, not even just person, I still know people that use it for what was kind of probably the most logical use case, I think, for the Apple Vision Pro, which was like uh, work while traveling. Um, and they still seem to find a lot of success from it, which is cool. Um, and yet I have, I'm basically back to traveling now. I've been traveling a fair bit and I've seen exactly zero vision pros on the road. So that's clearly a niche use case. I mean, compared to oh, when it sure. first came out, yeah. I mean, I would love to see the numbers for this. What percentage, cause Apple has a no questions asked. Is it 14 day or 30 day? Can't remember. But Apple has a no questions asked return policy, which for electronics I heard it was these insane, days, by the way, yeah, like what percentage of Vision Pros that were purchased have been returned? Because they were flipping everywhere for two weeks, and then yep. radio silence, gone, wiped off the face of the earth. You know how like practically every single poll is like corrupted in some way. Yeah, it would be cool to have an actual real poll of like, hey, did you buy one? And if you bought it, do you still use it in any capacity at all? Yeah. 